me to chair this. Uh, now, usually if you chair a teach meet, you've got to do all this organising and running about and finding sponsors and projectors and kit and stuff like that. And I didn't. I just sort of hung about and then come up here and Margaret said, would you do this? So that's really nice. Um, obviously, an incredible amount of work um, done by the, the folk here in Falkirk to organise this. Um, if you've not been at a teach meet before, I'm just going to do a wee few minutes just explaining, well, my idea of what happened in Teach Me, um, which is this, it's a, it was going to be a short history, but now it's a personal history. Um, and this is, it started a long time ago. Um, and if I knew which button was my speaker. Teach Me kind of started, um, oh, I'll get to that in a minute. That's perfect. Um, Teach Me started, I think, well, those are things in red are the important things. Wi-Fi, RSS, wikis, and Guinness are the, the sort of mainstays of TeachMeet. I actually think that TeachMeet, the first one was in two, 2006. I actually start, think it started in 2005. In 2005, I think there was about four people in Scotland blogging, and TeachMeet came from, I know it's TeachMeet. Uh, hi, David. David, the, the flash meeting's over there. <laughs> You're, you're in charge, I think. It, it's kind of running, I think. Um, but in 2005, that set, or the <coughs> Scottish Learning Festival, as it was then, um, Ewan McIntosh, who at that point was working for East Lothian and uh, you guys, what are you called? Learning Teaching Scotland. Um, <laughs> he, as a sort of practitioner or something like this. And he had a podcasting round table. And we turned up, I turned up, and a couple other... Were you there, David? Yeah, David, me, Ewan, and a guy from America. There was four of us, which made us one of the biggest round tables at set this year. People weren't really into sharing at that point. Um, but we realised we had like three quarters of the Scottish edu blogosphere in one space um, because we, we just kind of started using it. So basically Ewan then fired off this idea that we should have a get together or organise ourselves. And we started organising and listing and connecting on a wiki. And you all know what a wiki is now because you've been signing up for this. A wiki is just like a place to collaborate, organize things. So he, he organized a wiki where everybody sort of put where their blog was and where they worked and things like that. And then he decided to have, um, I think this one, yeah. it's Scott Edublog meetup in 2006. So it wasn't Teach Meet then. Um, and there wasn't any agenda at all. The reason we did it was because E Live, which was a festival in Edinburgh, was on, and Will Richardson, who was at, the, at that time the god of educational bloggers, was coming over from America, and we thought we would go to the pub with him. So we organised it in the wiki, and we went to the Jolly Judge. Um, and you can see there's some quite a few people who are still hanging about in Teach Meets um, who, are, who were there, or sent their apologies because they couldn't make it. Um, and basically that one, we went to the pub, we chatted, um, and had fun. This is some of that's you in there. Everybody looking very, very young. Andrew Brown in the middle, who some of you probably know. Will Richardson, who can't see his ponytail there, and David Muir. Um, and I'm actually taking that photograph with Ewan's camera, which is surprising. And we headed off to the Jolly Judge. And we had lots of geeky fun with laptops and Guinnesses. And I think we started realizing those are not all my empties. <laughs> yes, they are. They're not all me. Um, I think we realised what was going on after the event because tons of photographs started appearing up in Flickr. Lots of blog posts started mentioning eLive and uh, this. And we began to think, oh, gosh, there's a lot of connections going on here. There's a lot of good things. Compared to, I looked for pictures from, I searched Flickr from pictures from the Scottish Learning Festival 2005. There was none, not one. Even Ewan hadn't taken any at all. Um, there was nothing there, nothing on Flickr from anybody. But this is 
May 2006, and we're starting to put things together online and get it together. After that, we had this Teach Me in the Scottish Learning Festival, and I think that's where it really kicked off because we started having rules and things like that. What is Teach Me? And you'll recognize that, learn something new, be amused, amazed, all that stuff. Um, and you could join in in person or via Skype. Now, today we can join in via GlowMeet if we're lucky enough to have a Glow log on, and, or we can be in the Flash meeting. And I can see there's half a dozen folk in the Flash <coughs> meeting there. And if you're up here later on speaking, it'd be nice just to say hello to them and things so that we don't feel too lonely. Um, and we had a list of presenters who had to present for seven minutes on something really cool, interesting, whatever. Uh, and we had chatters, didn't have lurkers then, we had folk that were just coming along for a wee chat. And I don't think there was any rules. Um, and there was a social event for non-Glow mentors. I was unfortunate, I was a Glow mentor, just they were launching Glow at that point. And we went off to watch some children dancing in the main auditorium <laughs> instead of staying with all the people who were having all this fun. Uh, and Bob Hill, is Bob here yet? No, he's coming today. He's not going to manage. That's a pity. Because Bob was going to retire uh, before set at that point, and he's still nearly always turning up. Um, and this is what I kind of missed to go to the Glow meeting. Lots of free wine, because Ewan had got the sponsorship, um, and everybody went off to the GOAT. The idea was that people could speak about anything they liked for seven minutes. Same sort of thing as today. Ah, oh, there's David in the GOAT. What's the next one? The third edition. Uh, we went back to Edinburgh, and we just went to the pub and went for some food again. We didn't actually have any presenters. Obviously, I think it took quite a lot out of Ewan to organise that, and at that point, he was doing all the organisation. The next one, again, the next year in the Scottish Learning Festival, um, we had, getting bigger now, the, what's that thing? The Science Centre, the Science Centre. Uh, and we had an agenda with rules it's seven minutes long, no PowerPoint, unless you're doing 20 slides for 20 seconds. Now, all these rules were for this one. They weren't for this one or that one or other. They were different from the one before. And I think that's kind of important that teach meets have been very informal. But the idea is, and I like this bit here. I didn't notice that until I checked this out. No keynote. Because people at that time, I think what they didn't like about PowerPoint is you went to the learning festival, you saw somebody who was getting paid lots of money to present, and they read their slides to you, like I'm doing. Um, but they had less pictures than me, uh, and, and I'm not actually getting paid. Um, and <laughs> so was, I'm not, I'm a market, no. <laughs> it, it was huge. In this big science centre, we had lots of people talking, and it was great. And I think that time I actually got to talk, which was really good, because the year before, I had prepared a seven-minute talk to the second. I was word perfect. I had a fantastic slide deck, and I was really raring to go, and I never got picked. And that taught me a lesson. When I came up here, I had four slides I hadn't prepared at all, and I just got up and talked. And I think that's kind of more in the spirit of what we're trying to do here. Um, that's Ollie Bray uh, talking for seven minutes, and Ollie would have been prepared. But the idea is it's, it's not a high-pressure event. It's not you're amongst your pals, <coughs> we hope. And we went. Ah, there's the rules again. Seven minutes long. You're set up as part of the seven minutes. So that was a different set of rules for that one. Now, if you Google Teach Me, you get 77,000 answers. There's, there's 77,000. Huge number of Google things. There's been all sorts of different Teach Meets. There's been one in the wee, wee one in the borders where that was the first time I started hearing people who weren't talking about technology. They were just talking about stuff they were teaching. It was really lovely. Um, you've had League Meet that Con ran, which changed the format again. It was tons of fun. There was games, Lego. What else, Con? Oh, drink. drink. There's always drink. Uh, that wasn't changing the rules, that bit, Con. That was just sticking to it. Um, and the one a sort of offshoot, I think this is a teach meet, was the Education 2020 in Eiley, which is an unconference. All the ideas from this sort of fed in from geeky conferences like bar camps and unconferences, where people got ideas to break out of the our lecture idea. That's where it's coming from. So now th they're all over the place. And they're all organized by people like Margaret and Nick and the people who have organized this here. The big ones are maybe organized by Ollie Bray. They're organized by anybody who likes. And anybody can turn up, and it doesn't cost money. 
um, to turn up. It obviously costs a lot of time and effort for the people that are organising it. And they're in America. You took one to America, David. Yeah, yeah. It didn't work. Well, it's, 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 but there's ones in Australia. There's ones all all over the world. I think there's a Sweden one coming up. There's just been one. There's one going to be in East Lothian next year. <laughs> Obviously, nearly as exotic as Sweden. Um, all around the world, we've got all these teach meets. I just have loved them, and they've just been great. Uh, it's like just going to a nice pub and meeting all your pals or people you know online. When we started, there wasn't Twitter. How many people are on Twitter here today? Uh, quite a lot. Right, that's, that's not bad. That's, but the, the, it's, it's the, the whole idea of this is people are now connected online. Wasn't happening. This has been part of the rush. I think I probably said about enough. The fire rules are, I think, walk downstairs smartly, find a door, and leave. Uh, <laughs> the toilets are somewhere out there. That... <laughs> Grown-ups will be able to find if they walk about for five minutes. We're going to run with some seven-minute presentations, then some two-minute presentations. We're going to choose the presenters by a random selection. So I'm just going to spend the next 20 minutes resetting the PC to show up on the board, and then we can get on. Hmm. That's interesting. So on the internet... We've got a jackpot. Oh, hello. Oh, it's a flash meet. Oh, glow meet. Hiya. Is, how many people are in the glow meet now? There's one. There's six in the flash meet. Uh, so we've got seven people from elsewhere watching as well. So the idea is, I click this wee button here, I think. I would if it worked. Ah, click the fruit machine. <coughs> Neil's not here yet. The fix. Con is talking about. CPD con, I would guess. Oh, that was, that was just a mix, I thought that was Hi, I'm Con Morris from the CPD team. I'm going to get set up here. Seven minutes starts. Right, get that. See, what they do is they throw things at you if you don't finish in seven minutes' time. What's getting thrown at us tonight? That's not so bad. In lead me, it was beer bottles, so that's not bad. Right, hi, I'm Con Morris. I work for the National CPD team. This is my... It's a bit like confession. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been three months since my last teach meet. Anybody any idea what I'm doing here? The last one I was at, I decided rather crazily to sing a song. It seems like a great idea. You know, everybody will, will have had a few drinks and it'll be a wee bit of a laugh. Whose name came out of the hat first? Me. So I had all these stone-cold sober people and I'm going, here's a little side we wrote, and so on. But I won't do it again. Now, tonight I'm going to play a wee game. What's my topic again? CPD find? Yeah, thanks very much. How are we doing here? Get some volume in this. So that okay. Cool. Okay. And action. And action. Oh, that's good. It was nearly there. That's uh, Iniesta scoring goal against Chelsea. But that's not what we want. This could be it. Hmm. Coming soon. Right, we're going to play a wee game called CPD Fortunes. We need some sound here. So, we asked, the survey question was, we asked 100 members of the educational public where they look for their CPD. What did they answer? The folder. The folder. The paper catalogue. Let's see if that's one of the choices. Bing! I'll make the noises myself. Bing! Where else did you look? The other cupboard. The cupboard. Let's see if that's one of the choices. Well done, Nick. Let's see. Uh -uh. 
the staff room wall. Who does the staff room wall? Who puts the stuff up in the staff room wall? The CPD coordinator. Let's see if that's there. Yes, the school coordinator. I've done the wrong one, by the way, so that's one given away. The paper catalogue. Right, only two more goes. What's the last one? Where do people get their CPD in Scotland? You get the online catalogue, you got one in Falkirk, I believe. An educational website. You lot are too good. Right, okay. I prepared all these. Uh -uh. So, some time ago, how am I doing for time, John? Some time ago, somebody had this great idea about why don't we have a one-stop shop for CPD where Scottish teachers can come and find CPD from all sorts of places. And Muggins here got the job. So I got on a bus and I drove about and I talked to loads of providers in Scotland who said to me, what's the point of us putting stuff in a catalogue when nobody's visiting it? So I went and talked to loads of teachers who said, what's the point of us going to a catalogue for providers and not using it? So I solved it by just lying to both of them <laughs> and saying, yep, everybody's using CPD, fine, why aren't you? And all the teachers... So, here we are, and I'm going to set you a wee, just give you a quick demo of it, maybe. It's free to everybody. You don't need a Glow user ID and password to use most of CPD to find. There's one wee exception I'll talk to you about in a minute. Uh, easiest way to find it is to go to Google. Type in CPD find. You can see the great originality that went into the name. And... You usually get it in the first hit until some gambling site finds out that loads of people are visiting it and then we'll lose it. And it's hosted by LT Scotland on behalf of the National CPD team. And Bob's your uncle in your own time. So the rest of that song then. <laughs> okay, so what we did was persuade oodles of CPD providers to come and put their stuff onto a database. Pretty straightforward idea. Um, so we have private providers, we have uh, universities, universities maybe, click that. We have people like SQA, we have HMIE, and we've even got, I believe in here somewhere, we've got the same people who started drinking Guinness four or five years ago and invented a different type of CPD who are now kind of represented on CPD Find by a provider called Open Source CPD. And that's people's blogs and people's stuff. All right, okay. I'm going to set you a wee challenge. And the challenge is, we'll find CPD on anything that you want right now or your money back. <laughs> and considering you're getting this for nothing, I think it's quite, I'm quite safe. Right, give us a topic. Digital papers. Digital papers. Is that CPD or is that a kind of way of doing it? On how to do digital papers? <laughs> digital papers are good as well, but you've not heard of them, have you? You've got your money back. Okay, seven results found. So we've got SQA, I've got creating digital papers. We've got digital prelims and resources. So the SQA are obviously doing quite a wee bit of this. Doesn't help that I don't have any way of controlling this. Excuse me a wee second. We've got moving into away from digital papers, Glow, Glow Learn. Obviously, there's some notion that you can in Glow you can put in di digital tutorials, you've got books for all, and so on. So the way that CPD Find works is if you get something you fancy, you just add it to a wish list. So we'll take the first one, is that okay? Add it to your wish list. You can see that this is a course that SQA will charge you money for, working with Call Scotland. Uh, it's available on request. It's run by a guy called Paul Nisbet. And if you fancy the look at that, then you just add it to your wish list. So you can go through and you can search. There's various ways. You notice, by the way, when we went through that, you could also narrow it down. So. If you don't want a face-to-face -face course, you want an online course, you can narrow it down by that. If you want to narrow it down by another keyword, you can do that as well. Two more things to show you. And that is when you have... When you have got something in your wish list, 
You just simply do your name, your email address, send it to yourself, and it'll send all the details for your CPD plan. And down the bottom, thank you very much. Of course I did. Oh, I'm an ex-computing studies teacher. We always use it properly. Yeah. So that when anybody trips over the cable, let's teach them that properly. What? That's mine. So, thank you, Con. You're removed. Um, right, I really can't believe I'm doing this because I've been seconded to go out and talk to schools. I've managed to avoid Karen Short Primary School and <laughs> here they are on mass <laughs> to laugh. Um, so and I'm also breaking another rule of Teach Me that uh, that's not the right one. That uh, you shouldn't use PowerPoint, but we were out last night. And uh, that was my night for working on uh, this presentation. So I got home and didn't do it, but actually I was like after five in the morning going, oh, I'm not in my presentation. So I've done a quick PowerPoint, um, if I can find it. Help me, somebody. Uh, it's not that one, it's PowerPoint. That's one. Oh, God. Right. So if I go from the beginning, and I'm going to talk about e-portfolios. And when, uh, I think it was John was talking about, you've all heard of a wiki. <laughs> that whole row there burst out laughing, going, what is he talking about? And that's what they say to me when I talk about, like, oh, Twitter, oh, blogs. Oh, and they go, what planet are you? What language are you talking? <laughs> E-portfolios. So, um, I think I can go with that, and it should work. Uh, well, I heard about e-portfolios, first of all, on Twitter, um, <laughs> which is another story. I was on Twitter, and um, I knew all the language, like blogs and wikis and wokies, and, <laughs> and then somebody mentioned e-portfolios. I think it was Jay Richards had mentioned e-portfolios, and I thought, hmm, that's a new word. I don't know what that is. So I asked her, and she tried to explain it on um, Twitter, and I thought, oh, I'll look it up in Wikipedia, my friend. So I looked it up, and I think the next slide should be... Um, Something like that. It's a collection of, I won't read it because I'm probably not allowed to read PowerPoints, but there you go. It told me something like that, and I thought, um, uh, that, <laughs> that looks really interesting. It might be something I'm looking for because, um, hopefully, uh, I had, like, when I was at Cairn Shore for two years, as everybody there will know, I took over the ICT suite and had um, a class blog. Um, which is now, by the way, run by Evelyn Williamson as an art blog in my absence. And before that, it was run by Cassie Law last year, um, who's also here. So it's been running for uh, three, four years or something um, and built up a huge audience. So I didn't want it to just fall by the wayside. So they've taken it on for me. But not only that, <laughs> I'm not used to smart boards either. Um, I had also given children online spaces. And it seemed to me that they were almost like this e-portfolio thing. Um, they all had their own individual blogs over two years. I uh, had primary seven children, and they all had their own wiki spaces. And I think just because of a happy accident, actually, um, they were almost, to me, like e-portfolios. But why I was interested was because um, now that I go around schools talking about blogs and wikis and individual spaces for children, they say, well, I want to set up individual spaces for children. Like I think Juliet, from also Grand Jour, had done that. And she said, well, what do I do with it? And I went, well, just like nothing. Tell them to use it, because that's what I did. But that wasn't a very sensible thing to do, because people go, all right, so they just use it for anything. Um, but I think that actually the way, it was just a whole big mixture of things that it, it did work out and it absolutely changed what we did in the classroom. It changed how I taught, it changed how they learned, it changed everything. But it wasn't enough to say to somebody now, you know, you know, just 
give your children an online space, that'll be fine. Let them write what they want and spill it into the classroom and things. So the difference, I think, is here. I haven't timed this, so I might go way over <laughs> today when I should have been at work. <laughs> um, so uh, that's the difference. That uh, This is an online space that's more purposeful. Um, so I needed to test it out. So where did I go? Cantor Primary. And Morag Finlayson is here. I said, can I have some of your children, please? Uh, I need to go there and try this out and see if it works. Um, so I went there for, I think, three afternoons, I was guessing, three afternoons, and worked with six children. Um, and I thought, right, the first thing I learned, well, not the first thing, after a long time of giving children online spaces, I learned that if they're going to make it useful, they have to have ownership of this space. So we made a bokeh, and hopefully this will work. Every child needs one, and this is the email link. <laughs> work. <laughs> Um, it's not great uh, sound, but the children did that themselves. They went away with a wee um, portable MP3 player into a quiet place. This is not the toilet, though, but over there. And um, <laughs> then they uploaded it to Audacity and then uploaded it to uh, their Voki. Um They had to have ownership because I learned that as well when the children had their own online space. So they all created their own um, Voki. I don't know who that is, it might be Ram, it might be somebody. And they created their own VB avatar character. But most importantly, they decided what pages they wanted um, in their e-portfolio. Um, uh, trust, <laughs> you'd think I would have learned, but even then, I can't remember who this was, um, had said, oh, oh, can I get the camera and go and take pictures? And they come back, and, they want, and then they want to use this other website. And I'm going, I don't want it turning out like a Bebo or a MySpace or something, but <laughs> I'll trust them and leave them to it. But with, uh, I've not got this to show you. I wasn't sure if I've got online access. I've learned that as well when I'm talking out of school. So I've just got a picture. But this is a photo peach thing that she did. And she was talking about a new accelerated reading program. And in photo peach, you can take pictures and then put at the bottom comments of what you feel about it. And they just loved it. Um, and they, they wanted to use this other website, but they used it appropriately. They were saying how they were going to use their, their new e-portfolios. Um, so, and that's the point. I think in an e-portfolio, <laughs> ah, I'm only halfway there. Right, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Margaret. I think we need a wee warning. Like 30 seconds or something like that. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, yeah, let's do that. Where's Margaret? <laughs> oh. Next. Yeah. You on you? First thing in the morning, every morning, pupils sat one test each day. They recorded their scores and kept a log for me. Um, and all their aim was each day was get a personal best. And sorry, twenty. That gone quick. Okay, celebrate success by showing uh, improvements in class over time. Interest. Well, the scores are fed into Excel. We've got improvement, improvement. Improvement, improvement. This boy here hated the project and didn't show improvement, so it's not for everyone. I now use it in whole school, uh, sorry, one-to-one -one tutorials for mainstream pupils, um, and their comments are that they absolutely love it. Uh, sorry. They love it. Helps me focus. I've got a tablet that does this. He's talking about Ritalin. But, <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> makes learning fun. And um, thanks for listening. There you go. Just done. Let's go another two. I'll need to go that way. <coughs> You on this one, okay? Yeah. What's this? That's somebody else's. You could maybe take the mouse out. That would do. Would you take the mouse oh, out? Yeah. Oh, just that way. <coughs> Give us a minute. Well, wait a minute. Well, two minutes yet, man. Two minutes, two Muppets. One of them's over there, one of them's here. You get to sing along if you want. Ever thought of a summary tool for displaying? Something that would be really handy, really useful? Could use it online. You could even print it out. I'll get my timing right here. <laughs> <laughs> it could be used by both pupils and staff, the examples you see tonight, boys and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, used by primary five, primary six, and primary seven pupils in a school in Falkirk. But what is the name of this tool, this fabulous tool that I'm building up to? You can sing along in a moment. What's the word? It's a wordle. Here we go. You can use them for book reviews. What's the word? It's a wordle. Good stuff, there you go. This was a book review, you can use it for a book review. But perhaps you don't use it for a book review. But there's another book review. That book was about war, it's the machine gunners. But maybe you don't want to use it for the children. Perhaps you prefer to use it for the staff. This is a word of our website links. This has all delicious links. And I've kind of linked them all. And you can see that the majority ones are Web2 or tools or stuff to do with writing, literacy. Can you guess what this was? Can you guess what it is yet? That was our ICT plan, and luckily, ICT came up in big words, which is good. So it, you can put any sort of text in there. This is our ICT policy, and you can see where our priorities in our ICT policy. policy. ICT, school, staff, pupils. So it takes text from a website. It takes text from a document and summarizes it. You can play with the pretty colors, as the pupils did before. Or for staff, you can make it black and white, and then you don't get a row for photocopying in color. <laughs> but... That's, that's good, but what about a tool for recording your learning? I know you can do that in a jotter, but what about recording learning outcomes? What did you do today? A nice little tool, you can record five things. So on Sunday, what did you do today? I wrote this down presentation. Oh no, here we go. And then you can record tasks, you can record targets, outcomes, and you can even combine them together into a Wordle from two tools, two minutes, two Muppets, two tools, Wordle and memory. There we go. Thank you. I think it should be thrown back. What's the word? <laughs> okay, one more two minutes. I think, how are we doing for time? Are we? Brian? This is the speeded up there. I've, I've really done it on 45 I minutes. Two days. Come for an evening. Come for an evening and, and be done. Let's see. While I'm doing this, my name is Brian McLaren. I work for Learn and Teach in Scotland with uh, Derek Robertson and Consolarium, a development officer for Good games work. based learning. That That's <laughs> working as a joke. Yeah, if I can tell you, I worked from home today. Brilliant. I weed. If you can. <laughs> Then I got up, uh, just insert your, uh, insert your own jokes wherever you like. Um, 
I used, I'm a primary deputy in real life working in Clipmanninshire. My two minute talk is about linking the learning with Professor Leighton. And my theme hasn't started yet, you know. <laughs> right, linking the learning with Professor Leighton, it's uh, something has. Professor Leighton's a DS game. If you've seen it, if you've played it at all, we built it, used it as a, a contextual hub for learning. If I can get this in the right place, then we'll be good to go. Ah, oh, damn it, the new Prezi doesn't play straight off, right? Oh, you must be Professor Leighton. Very strong narrative thread running all the way through the game. It's essentially a maths uh, problem solving based. Um, don't even take you away from the words. Can you read and hear all at the same time? You take the role of Professor Leighton and his, uh, his young helper and they go and solve the mysteries in the Curious Village. Basically, you're hunting for the, the golden apple, but we'll hunt you on because it's all very jolly and all, but basically what we did is we took it on in a primary six and used the game as a contextual hub, which allowed us to do a one-minute dash. Have I got a minute left, John? Good. A one Great, a one minute dash through some of the stuff that we covered in terms of literacy. As the narrative unfolds through the game, it all works all at different paces. You can do it individually with children, they can work together in little groups, but there are loads of opportunities to do things like build the story as collaborative story making. You can do some functional writing with the San Mister Times, which is the village where it all takes part in. It all ties fairly into your, oh, look at that, it's a bloody smart board. Doesn't it? We, don't, we don't have them in Quitman and Shire, you've got to just work it out. Podcasts we did as well, giving your audience for your writing, diary entries, more functional writing as it steps through, building up your characters, character profiles. Maths, this is uh, taken obviously from page one of the document. This is where it hits for me. Can you hear that? Right, bloody hell, a fun way of learning. Oh, am I allowed to say that? And I go, me. <laughs> Sorry, there's nobody there anyway, is there? Um, he's good, he's good. <laughs> and I run through some of the technologies as well. Back to the maths, that was the key for me. The young man who could say that that was, you know, he, he could clearly see how he was linking his learning there, how problem solving gave him a, it gave him a buzz to get to the nerve. We used crazy talk, as does everybody, do they? My name is Baby Dahlia. Fantastic, we love crazy talk. Comic building, more links back to uh, young Nick over there. Use things like Comic Brush and uh, Pixton, which if you've ever seen Ollie, you'll recognise some of them. Uh, also use newspaper generators. There we go. You can read that bit for yourself and you don't need to throw that at me. <laughs> if you're interested at break, I've got two or three with me. <laughs> right, going back for a seven minute. And yes. There you go. Are you on this box here? Yeah. I want to go back a bit now. Right, um, you've already heard Margaret, and a lot of mine is linked to Margaret. So, <laughs> um, last year I was a probationer at Cairnshaw Primary, and previous to that I had been Margaret Vassy student, and it was left in my not so capable eye, and it was a shame. <laughs> Uh, her class blog when she went to the convent was left in my um, very unsure hands. So I learned along with the class the impact that this could have on their learning. I was really lucky because the main thing about having a class blog is an audience for children's work. And because Margaret already had an established blog with massive audience, this really helped me because it was something that was already there and I just had to build upon it. However, if you're not as fortunate as I was, there are different ways in which 
to build an audience. Connecting with Scotland is obviously really important. And to do that, we were um, part of Scots Edge Blogger, which was a blog with <coughs> um, different schools on it. You can go on, you can look and see, and you can click on their blogs and visit them and things like that. It's a really good way of linking them all together. Also connecting with other countries. We were connected with countries like America and Australia, and the children would comment on our blog and we would comment on theirs. And you can see, this was a map, I mean, that was May last year that that was taken. But each of the red dots obviously represents a visitor. And when dots appeared in new places, that was indirect learning without even having to think about it. Kids were really interested to find out where this country was and find out a bit about it because people were looking at their blogs from places they'd never heard of. We tracked our visitors as well and we had a counter. Again, this was May last year. This was they haven't changed it since I did it the last time. <laughs> it's probably really bad, but um, it's no longer mine, so I felt I'd just go with when it was mine. And in a year and a half, we had over 16,000 visitors. So, I mean, that for the children alone was a massive motivator. A lot of the visitors left comments. Um, these are examples from someone in the school, a child from another school, and an adult, a teacher from another school. Again... So it's lots of adults, lots of children, all commenting on their learning. This was a huge motivator because although as a teacher you give feedback constantly, I think a lot of it just goes straight over their heads and a lot of the time it's, oh, what do you know, kind of thing. But another teacher saying, well, that's great, how did you do it? I think is a far better motivator than, because just miss law talking our usual. <laughs> um, so... It, didn't see, it seemed to sink in a lot more and it made them reflect on their learning and they had to think about, right, how did I do it? Somebody's asking me, I need to explain it. Um, when, uh, coming back to what Margaret said about ownership, our class blog was managed by myself because I was too scared that they deleted it and Margaret found me and <laughs> killed me <laughs> because I was under strict instruction not to lose it. Um, so I didn't really let them have a lot of ownership of it and I felt that they needed something because I was doing it, showing them it, but they weren't really doing it themselves. So that's why I gave them wikis, which again, an idea from Margaret. Um, our wikis are all linked in the blog, <coughs> they're still there, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> and each child has a wiki and some of them are still using it, which I think is amazing because they've no input from me anymore, I'm not even in the school but they're still going on them, and as you can see, you just have to click on each child's name if you want to read any of it. And again, comments from other teachers, they used them for writing, and they got great feedback from different people, including myself. Um, that's an example of a story that one of my girls last year wrote at home. So that was with no input from myself at all. It gave them that motivation to go and write by themselves. And I think that it was a really successful tool to use. It really brought out a lot in the kids that I had in the class. I used some of the stories for national test portfolios because they had sat and wrote them completely off their own back. So it was a true reflection of what they were capable of with no input from myself. I then gave some of the children, only the ones who wanted it, because I felt it was a big responsibility for them. And again, I was leaving in June. So it was whoever wanted a blog could have it. And again, they're still blogging, which I think is it just shows you that they don't need somebody to be standing over them saying, you need to do this. They did it because they wanted to do it, and obviously they still are. It was a good way to introduce a safe online space because children obviously have likes of Bebo and Facebook, and they need to know how to manage these things and the fact that there are different comments that can come in, and they were all moderated by myself, but we always talked about, you know, you, you need to be aware of who's reading this. There are rules that we need to follow. And I think it was a good introduction to internet safety. Also aided my planning. And I know that um, Margaret was the same. How am I doing? Um, because I could link to their interests. Because thing, I mean, children might not necessarily come up and say to you different things. But they would blog about it and their interests. And it meant that I knew what they were into and um, could link my plans to the things that they were interested in. There are lots of different tools out there that are free that you can use. I'll just flick through them. This, we used GoAnimate um, for writing. We used made-up comic strips, and the children had to 
use that to write stories and our main emphasis was on speech marks, so that really helped. Photo bucket, just a slideshow with captions, and again, there's the address. Animoto, um, again, a slideshow with captions, but you can add in music. And my pick was, you could use a PowerPoint and add in the children's voices. So that was another one that was really good. And there's lots more, but um, we've not got time to always go through them. Self-confidence was the biggest thing. You're going to throw that at me. <laughs> <laughs> was the biggest thing. I mean, apart from motivation, their confidence over the course of the year, just, it was phenomenal. We interviewed at the very start and at the very end, and the difference between the two interviews was amazing. They were so relaxed at the end of the year and they knew how to ask open questions, they knew how to respond and they used, like they would give feedback on their inter the people they were interviewing and they, they, it was just amazing. They're really conscious he's going to throw that at me. <laughs> Again, there are obviously obstacles and I don't have time to do that. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Cassie. Um, we're just about, I think, ready for a wee rest, but a couple of things I think we need to talk. I'm actually going to do my two minutes as well because it kind of fits into this, and I did get pulled out earlier in the thing. One is you might notice that Twitter is, is rolling up there, and you're seeing what people are saying. Mostly people in here are people in the flash meet, and they are tagging their tweets with a hashtag um, tmfalkert09, which is a hashtag. Now, what I'm hoping that people who are presenting will do today is they will upload their slides if they've got slides or blog about the presentation and again tag that with the same tag, put it in a, a category if your blog uses categories or tag if it uses tags so that these can be aggregated together. Uh, if you use Twitter, tweet with this tag with your blog post or whatever. You can, um, if you use Delicious, link to these people, tag it with that. If you're taking photographs, um, tag it with that. Because um, I think one of the things I was saying at the start about teaching me is it kind of goes on more. It's not just the, the couple of hours you're here. There's a lot of stuff to read and rethink about and all the rest of it. Um, and that has something a wee bit to do with my two minutes, which I'm just going to do now. Just kind of That'll take us nicely up to uh, tea. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I'll never get it done in two minutes. Uh, so this is uh, EduTalk. EduTalk is um, another way of communicating online. I've put out a few wee bits of rubbish substitute business cards. I'll give the other half of the room one later on. This is podcasting for everybody in the easiest sort of mobile way. It started off at uh, the Scottish Learning Festival. David Noble and I were talking about some sort of podcasting project. We couldn't come up with one. So we, we, we sort of jammed together this easy one using Poster as a blogging system where anybody can email an MP3 file so they can record it on their phone and email an MP3 file to an email address and it gets stuck up on this blog. And we did quite well. We got about 28 people posting reflections, thoughts, funny things, interesting things about the Scottish Learning Festival over the two days. Um, so we thought we would move to wrong thing, button, this one here, which is edutalk.cc. And you can very easily add a wee bit of audio, your reflections on this. What's really nice to think about audio as compared to blogs is you get an awful lot of emotion out of it. It was really nice to listen to people talking. We're only looking for one or two or eight minutes. This is why we do it, because we can, because it's fun. Voices give more information. Um, and to let people we shot at podcasts, it's hard to build up an audience. Cassie was talking about an audience. It takes a long time. You have to keep on podcasting. But we should have an audience here at this community. Um, and what anything you like, really, about education. Uh, I don't think there's enough time in two minutes to read that. Um, how you can just send any MP3 or sound file. Email it via email from your phone to post at edutalk.posterist.com. It's on the wee bits of paper I give these guys. It will be on the wee bits of paper that I give you people later on. You can use Gabcast, so you can actually pick up any phone. You could use a dial-up phone, a phone plugged into the wall. You phone that number, enter the channel number, password, record your audio, press 2, and it will end up on Edutalk as well. If you've got an iPhone, you can get Audioboo. Use Audioboo in the usual way. Again, it's just talking into the phone. 
um, and all you need to do is tag it or edu talk, ed edu talk, and it will get picked up and pulled into there. Ipadio, same thing. The audio will be pulled into to there. So the idea is it's a, it's a really easy way for folk to. Very second half, we have plenty of time. Um, it's, it's a really easy way for folk to join in a podcast. Why you would do it? Um, the sort of lessons we learned. A couple of lessons I learned was if you ask big software companies to do something for you for nothing, they will do it. The posters people changed the way their system worked to help us out. The IPDO people changed the way their system worked to help us out. I just needed to email them. Uh, this, I think, is a lesson for people who do stuff, software producers, service producers for um, education, as they could take a lesson out of that. They've changed their whole system. It'd be nice if we could do that with some other, with educational software. Uh, so educop.cc, give us a call. Uh, and I think we'll have a break now, Margaret. Uh, kind of thanks very much to everybody so far. Thank you. Thank you. All right, folks. It's not really an appropriate uh, welcome back, I think. We're just going to start with a couple of things. First, this is a brain pop about Teach Me Falkirk. If you're interested in brain pops, you talk to Kim. Yes? Kim over there, who is Mr. and Mrs. Brain Pop. And this is Brain Pop. Ooh. Is that loud enough? Aren't you going to help me, Moby? You did promise. What do you mean, only if you can find the earplugs? Dear Tim and Moby, I've been asked to explain Teach Me, but you guys are the best at explaining things, so will you do it instead? From Ollie. Wow, thanks, Ollie. No problem. Teach Me is a meeting of, well, teachers. Yes, they do see other teachers in the staff room and at staff meetings, but that's not exactly what Teach Meet is about. Teach Meet is a chance for teachers from different schools to tell each other about the coolest things they're doing in the classroom, mostly using new technology. Mm, yes, it is a bit like show and tell at school. But the real power of Teach Meet extends way beyond the event into the networks that support professional development. Whether these networks are real or virtual, the power of the idea is increased by the exposure and discussion it generates. You don't need to pass a test or win an award to speak at Teach Meet. In fact, anyone can speak, and should if they feel able to do so. Many first-timers to Teach Meet find themselves on stage at their second because they were so inspired by the stories they heard the first time round. One other thing about Teach Meet is that speakers are randomly chosen. This helps keep things interesting and encourages participation. Research evidence indicates that best practice is often fostered by inspired teachers who are actively involved in continuing professional development, or CPD. And that's why teach meets are so important. Okay. Maybe we should have practiced a little more before we came to bagpipe meet. That was a camel at the end. It was traditional. So am I right, Kim Brain Pop will produce these for you. That's their business. Yes. It's an online uh, group for funded candidates and individuals. Explaining stuff. Explaining stuff and it covers a whole lot of questions anybody can create. And it's also marked for short and flexible. Thank you very much. And when we're thanking Kim, just before we get to the end, right down at the bottom of Teach Me is somewhere down there, down below the lurkers. Oh, did you notice that? Did anybody phone in over uh, the break? Hmm. The food that's coming up. Big list of people at meeting, and there we go. These guys here, still just CPD team, uh, still just gave us the nice smart board as well. Um, 
Money from Keystone Education, do be. I do be here. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I maybe I, I, I've been emailing you, but you haven't been answering. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I could get a face to face. Uh, Primary Blogger, RMIT Solutions, and uh, Scarlet Ribbons have sponsored Teach Meat, which is why you will get all the stuff you've eaten already, all the drink you've had, why you'll get quite a lot of the food you eat afterwards for free. Um, so I think a big thank you to them. That's very nice, you guys. Um, <laughs> there probably was something else, but that will probably be. Okay, we'll go back and have a wee listen. I'll take Cassie out there. Can I take, no, you, can you, you can't select and remove people. Neil's not coming, seemingly he sent his apologies. <laughs> Katie! <laughs> seven goes, seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, be nice. Wait till it comes up. <laughs> Nearly. Yeah, I thought this might happen. Uh, we're all eating up too much bandwidth, so this is probably going to go really, really, really slowly. So if it does, I apologize, but it's because we're, we're using lots and lots of internet, which is great in its own self. So, Okay, you can start. Uh, I'm Katie. I am a Glow Development Officer with Learning and Teach in Scotland. I'm actually an English teacher, and I teach in Glasgow. And I speak really, really fast, which should be a benefit to this, but at the same time probably means you won't understand me. So you can get the recording of the Flash meeting or the Glow meeting and slow it down, and then maybe you'll actually understand what I'm talking about. Um, I'm here to talk to you about seven Glow groups in seven minutes. Glow groups are sub-sites, little websites within Glow. Glow, if you don't know, is a national school's intranet. Um, it's coming to Falkirk. It's already in Falkirk to a certain degree. Ask Margaret or Malcolm here if you want some more information about it. Um, they will give you your login very soon, won't they? <laughs> Excellent. Um, so I'm going to show you what some teachers have been doing with Glow around the country. It's been live for two years now in schools. Also going to show you um, some of the national stuff that's available for you as well. So even if you can't get on with your class yet, stuff that you could do and access at national level. So I'm going to go to an area of Glow called My Glow, and My Glow is my own personal space that nobody else has access to unless I let them in. And in there I have put some web links okay, um, to seven different groups. I'll maybe get through five before I get a Muppet chucked at me. So the first one I'm going to look at is called The Magic Castle. Now I've picked all of these because all but one you will be able to get access to. These aren't hidden anywhere. The teachers who run these groups or the places that these groups are stored are available to everyone in the country either because the teacher has decided that they want to share or because they're at national level. The other one's um, Alan over in the corners there. So if you've got an interest in the subject that he teaches, you might want to go and ask him if he'll let you have a wee look at his school group. But it's open to all, oh, brilliant, so you can, you can see them all. This is the Great Hall. You might have done uh, Learning Unlimited projects or joining the learning projects in your classes for primary. Um, this is a primary school, a wee primary school in Dumfries and Galloway called Money Ive. And they did um, one of these joining the learning projects and turned their class into the Great Hall. And they decided they were also going to capture what they did in GLOW. So you can see over here we've got some news and the kids can upload news, as can the teachers, talking about what they did each day with their project. Now if some of these dates look a bit out of date, it's because I'm looking at kind of archived projects just so I can show you stuff that's been shared nationally. Um, these are links to online games. As a teacher, you can add links to anything that you want your kids to see. And you can decide exactly who gets to see the group that you make. They've made uh, various page tabs along the top here. The teachers just added all of these in to fit what they were doing with their work. So if I go to the portrait gallery, for example, you can see the teacher has uploaded pictures and work that the children have done. Now in this school, um, the Parents also have access to GLOW, um, and that's something that will be coming along you know, in, in due time in each local authority. But the kids can go home and show the, the parents the work that they did in class that day and GLOW so much more easily uh, than they could if they had to drag home bits of paper and, and posters and things that they'd made. It's all up there to be seen. They actually had an open evening as well, where they got the, the parents in to come and have a look. Oops, gone out of that. Have a wee look at what they've been doing with their project. So they documented that and shared their, their celebration by uploading work here. And there's a wee video here that was taken on the day. The reason that it's kind of overlapping is just the resolution of this screen's a wee bit too big. Um, I don't know if that'll play. We might be out of bandwidth. But she just talks about what she liked doing about best in the project. Teacher just uploaded this video into um, an online hosting service and then pulled it through Glow. So if you've got a video hosted anywhere online, you can bring it in Glow. But you can also just put it into Glow itself. Uh, 
What she says is, I like cutting people's heads off the best. And there's some brilliant pictures that I might have scrolled. You can see here's a guillotine here. So I'm going to go out to another more group. Okay. Um, this is a project that was done uh, last year with the author Julia Donaldson. Now, five primary one classes. So we're talking early year setting here. Primary one classes. Um, who one teacher decided she wanted to work with other primary one classes on a literacy project, a bit like the X Factor. They would read a lot of picture books by a particular author and then vote on their favourite. So they picked Julia Donaldson, the teacher using Glow by going to the staff room and putting a, a discussion topic in a discussion board. Looked for teachers to work with who would also want to do that in primary one. Hooked them all up together. Um, and they did this project where the, the kids could use Glow Meet, which is what's running in the corner there, the web conference system, to talk to one another live about their favourite work and share their, their work. They could also upload work to the Glow Meet, uh, sorry, to, to the Glow Group. You can see if I go to the um, the linking up page, <coughs> that's where their Glow Meet took place. And there's also a record of everything that they did on each of the Glow Meets that took place. There was five, so you can see there what happened in each one. Um, on the book factor, you can see what they did and how they voted for their favourite books. So there was a survey and the kids got to pick which of the books they wanted as a class. As you can see, Stickman won by a mile. So in Glow Meet 5, they all got together and Julia Donaldson came in, funded by the Live Literature Programme of the Scottish Book Trust, and did a Glow Meet from one of the schools which was broadcast to all the other schools. She read the whole of Stickman. She sang them a wee song. They totally interacted. It was a way of spending, I think it cost £75, because half of it was, was paid, but we paid the £75, but it would cost you £75 to do this in your, in your class. Get an author in from the Live Literature Programme and broadcast it out to loads of schools in your local authority or even across the country. Um, so you're bringing one school visit to tens, twenty. 100 schools if you like. The biggest we've had was Percy the Puffin, which was 60 nursery classes being read a story from the Scottish Seabird Centre. Uh, and we worked out that was about 1,000 nursery kids that were watching. It was brilliant. Absolutely excellent. Um, right, I'd better go to the secondary then. Uh, Stirling High Business Admin. This is Alan's, who's in the corner. Wave, Alan. Hi. Um, this is his Glow Group. Um, he's done loads of stuff in here um, for doing an intermediate business uh, management course. And it's a group that's shared between his S5 and his S3 class. You can see he just put up lots of really useful information for the, for the kids on the front page. So course arrangement, past papers, access to homework and course notes. He's got links that are useful for the kids, news about homework and challenges that are coming up. He's got one of these Vivo keys that Margaret showed you earlier as well. Oh, I'm in, right, okay. Um, he's brought in an RSS feed of um, the BBC Business News. So if there is a news feed somewhere that exists online, you can bring it in through Glow, same as Twitter feeds. And he's brought in some news um, articles from Sky News as well, using, is it YouTube? He brought it in through. Now, obviously, if your school blocks YouTube, that won't be any use to you, but they can access it from home because Glow is accessible 24 hours a day, you know, seven days a week from anywhere you want. Um, but you could also put it on TeacherTube or another site that might not be blocked in your school. Right, I'm going to have to race. I'll tell you about the other ones if we've only got a minute left. Uh, James Young High School, this was a, a math teacher that is fourth year standard grade credit maths class, we used discussions boards all year to get them talking and chatting about their work and helping one another, supporting one another. It was an excellent example of peer support. The Literacy in English National Group uh, is where we hold a lot of national author events. So we've had Anthony Horowitz, Michelle Paver, we've had CPD events happening from the Edinburgh Book Festival in there as well, so do keep an eye on the Glow blog. And um, the National Homecoming Group is good too, right? Ask me later if you want more. <laughs> Thank you. Take yourself off. Oh, no, that's that's a two-minute one. Let's go back. I'm just going to Be this time. <laughs> no, it's not working. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you this spot back. Uh, my name's uh, David Noble. I'm a chart teacher at Hillside School um, in Fife. It's a provision for children who are looked after and accommodated. We've got around about 35 boys from all over Scotland. We've got a couple of boys, um, I think, from the Falkirk area or up towards Kincardine. Um, 
just while I'm setting up, could you maybe shout out a couple of ideas of the kind of conditions that have to exist in your average classroom for the duration of a period for learning to take place? Just shout it out while I'm getting set up. Good organisation, yep. Teaching and pupil, okay. <coughs> Anything else? Conditions that have to. Motivation. Motivation, right, okay. Um, we came up with five as a school, and I'll, I'll take you through that in a moment. Five conditions, five kind of principles that would have to, to be in place. Um, admittedly, from the pupils' point of view, uh, hoping that the teachers are, are well organised as well. Um, so, my massive amounts is going to be on using Microsoft Excel to support what we call our, our rewards scheme. It's interesting that Excel has actually been mentioned this for the second time it's been mentioned tonight. Um, I still teach Microsoft Excel. I still teach the old PC Passport course um, that's been phased out. Teach Microsoft Excel has got um, very, very little relevance, although it's quite a, quite a useful tool. But we've used it for the last seven years at Hillside as part of our positive action strategy, our po posit positive behaviour uh, strategy. And um, give you a bit more information. That's the school uh, just up here. Uh, lovely sort of four acres, I think, of ground uh, in the centre of Aberdour, um, just north of, of Edinburgh and Cramond. Um, so, what's that? 160 acres. That's a bit different from four. 160, but I thought four was four then. Uh, four to me was really big when I was growing up. Um, so it's a uh, fantastic kind of therapeutic environment and all the staff are trained in therapeutic crisis intervention. So we, we have got the skills and we have got the environment that's quite conducive to, to working with uh, children, many of whom are, are still living chaotic lives. Um, that's a link to the school blog at the bottom. Uh, we, we're quite proud, uh, both in the care setting and education setting, to, to talk about the work that we're doing and we also include pupils' work there. And we actually have been experimenting with a Twitter stream and every day we update our Twitter account and that appears at the school blog as well, just to give, whether it's inspectors or uh, possible uh, boys who are about to join us and maybe a bit scared about what, uh, what the, the school's like, a bit more information about what goes on at the school. So seven years ago, we were also introducing a whole range of access uh, courses, access two and three predominantly. Um, so there's a whole culture change in the school. We were moving away from school certificates for these children who hadn't achieved maybe a great dis disruptive learning, hadn't been in school for two or three years at a time. Um, we moved towards, we, we saw the access provision and we were really excited about it. So we decided to bring in access courses right across the entire curriculum. Um, but as other residential schools, uh, uh, other kind of off-campus provisional talk providers will talk about, they'll say that um, academic success is, is still not necessarily um, going to kind of break the cycle of deprivation and underachievement and such like. And I'm not advocating that um, all pupils have to be going through national courses, many of which at access level, in my opinion, were badly written and badly resourced. But we took that decision. We said to our pupils, when you're at the school, everything that you do positively, all the work that you do in class, will count towards national qualifications. And so the average pupil at Hillside will leave with roughly the equivalent to eight foundation standard grades, uh, using um, a mixture of standard grades and national courses. But we felt that the conditions had to be right within the classroom. We had to set up a system, working with all the staff in the school and the pupils, that would mean that we were encouraging at all times positive behaviour and positive action around the whole school, um, transitions between classes, break time and such like, for teaching and learning to have a chance of happening. So the reward scheme uh, grew up, um, got the kind of prin main, main principles there, what we were looking for, um, and we were using Microsoft Excel, simple program that we had across our entire network. So it was in the units, it was in the children's homes, um, and it was in every single classroom and every room within the school. And it meant that we could use this to feed back, to encourage pupils and staff as well to feed back on how the boys were performing during the day. So I'm going to come out of the PowerPoint quickly and just show you a little bit of a video that we kind of cobbled together, myself and a couple of pupils, over the last uh, two days using our brand new flip camera. The reward schemes are a full day assessment of the way of evaluating how a boy has got on during the day. So, based on the five principles of behaviour in the school, and a boy is allocated five points for each period of the day based on how he adheres to those five principles of behaviour. And if he manages to hear 
Rat vorzuschlagen. Für mich und für mich Volk ist das sehr talentiert. Was ist das für ein Druck? Was hat das für ein Druck? Ich denke, das ist noch ein bisschen der erste extra Kontrolle. Ähm, für den Rat stimmt es. Ich habe eine Schimpfung. Ich habe eine Schimpfung von uns. Für den Rat. Ich habe eine Mehrheit. Ich habe zwei Punkte. Und, ähm, The full point would be from 405, and if you get something above 380, you don't get the merit. You ask him sometimes would you like a point something, and um, to get points after school, uh, all the way up to a red thing. You get merits from that at the after school meeting at the end of the whole week, you got a two pound merit, and at the end of the month, you get some things to get to. If you get all your merits, I'll stop it there. There was one boy um, we had to edit out towards the end. Uh, we were cut, doing the editing um, uh, late on uh, today. Who said, "Yeah, if you do really well during the weekend, you get five points, and every class um, you get fed." And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the, the boy who was editing that particular video says, "No, you've, you've got to leave that in. Everybody will laugh." And I says, "No, we'll have the care commission to do that." <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely not true. Um, and so, um, interestingly enough, and I'll be honest, one of the boys says, "If you do really well during the during the week, then you know the, you'll you'll get home. You'll get home to see your mommy that weekend." Um, and I'll come on to that in a wee minute because it's it's interesting how how staff are using our reward scheme. Um, so the principal's behaviour that we came up with was management, all staff, uh, maintenance team, kitchen staff, and we came up with the five principles of behaviour seven years ago, and this is what we stick to. So it's Positive reinforcement, so it's about earning points during each part of the day, the 24 hour curriculum in fact. Um, and you, we encourage staff and teachers to reflect at the end of the, the period of time, uh, there's uh, up to 20 slots in a day, and we say right, how many um, of these principles of behaviour have you exhibited during that period of time, and that equates to the number of points. And we try constantly to not make it a behavioristic tool, or overtly behavioristic, in the sense of saying to folk, right, you, know, you better behave yourself, you're going to lose a point. It's all about coming in fresh with zero. If you've had a really bad period before, forget it and move on. It's time to start earning some points for yourself and also for the unit. Uh, that's great. A minute left. Okay, this is a, the setup. So it's a simple Excel spreadsheet. We've got the pupils' names where the colour boxes would be. Um, and we've got the day broken down into uh, segments. That's how Monday's broken down all the way through from mealtime, lunchtime when they come back from the weekend, all the way to Monday at bedtime. We've got some uh, simple formulas embedded, so they get a running total that any staff, any boy can see at any time during the day, and at after school meetings, we reflect on the points that were earned, the totals the previous day, and we can focus on where, where we have to, to improve. We also have another part of the spreadsheet where uh, that's where the running totals are kept. This is printed out and handed out at four o'clock every day to each of the four units where they can discuss the points. And we've got a running total, we've got four houses, and they have a target of 80% of the merits to earn during uh, a term. And then there's a unit prize so they can go out for a Chinese meal or get a, a, a day trip. Um, there's also a comment sheet. Every name is, has a hyperlink. You can click on a pupil's name and put in some positive or development comments in there. That also goes to the units. They can see that in real time or that it's printed off at the end of the week. These are the payment slips that go out every Monday for the boys that have managed to get so many merits the previous fortnight. But we're working on how we're improving our approach and I think the key thing there is to update it, keep the boys involved in the discussions, and also make sure, as I say, that it's not used as a behavioristic, uh, as a tool of bribery, it's used to uh, reinforce positive action. Thank you. Thank you, David. And I think that's all the seven minute guys so we've got two minute people left and a name or two to put in if i knew how to do that i'll just go do this and figure it out in a minute Let's see who's going to oh no scott kirsten <laughs> well we'll get her in a wee test oh, you you get two minutes oh she's no she's eaten uh <laughs> your two minutes is burning away here kirsten do you want, are, are you okay for now, or do you want an F-up test? Okay. Do you need... Why don't you lay hands for a chat? Do you need a mic? Yeah, I'll just use a mic. 
Okay, um, I'm Kirsten Grieve. I'm from a company called Doobie. I'm not going to spend that much time talking about Trump Way, um, but we enhance learning teaching using technology. It's all about working with teachers who maybe aren't as confident, who feel that there is a need to be motivating their kids in this way, but really don't know where to start. Um, I was given a call um, by a teacher who works in the north in a primary school a couple of weeks ago. She was looking at ways how she could enhance her topic of road safety. So I went into her school and worked with her primary three class and introduced them to Google Earth, something that we all know me very well, but they didn't. Um, so what I got the kids to do was to type in their postcode and find exactly where their house was. I then asked them to zoom out and look at where the house was in relation to their school. So from here, what we did was we used the Google Ruler tool um, and we asked him to mark out the route from home to school. So from here, we could see, right, okay, which is the quickest route? How many main roads do I cross? Um, is my route the safest route to do? Um, how do I get there? Does mum bring me? Does um, my dad bring me? Do I cycle? Do I walk? Then we asked the children to calculate their carbon footprint. So what I was trying to sort of tell the teacher was it wasn't about what we were doing, it was road safety, but it was how we were doing it. We were using technology, we were engaging them, we were motivating the children. Um, and from that very, very small idea of Google Earth and finding their school, they were extremely motivated. The children thought it was fantastic. So now that teacher has looked at other ways she can incorporate Google Earth into her learning and teaching and really that's all I've got to say. So it's about giving teachers small ideas and sparking creativity in the classroom and tying it into curriculum for excellence. And things like Google Earth, the use of, we've seen today, Pixton, um, Flick, um, not Flickr, um, I mean, all these types of things. We've looked at, um, what's my, what's Wordle. All these things are tools teachers can be using. It's just how we help teachers to help them enhance learning teaching, help them tie into curriculum for excellence. So that's exactly what we do. And what we did with the primary three class was just a very short thing. I'm not saying any more, but you get the point. Google Earth, fantastic. And the PT loved it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That seemed to be a, 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 that's one of our sponsors and there was no product placement, so it's probably worth checking out the product as well since they didn't place it. No, that was perfect. That was really, that was great. That's why I'm, that's why I'm, I'm now placing the product. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. Seems to have given up the ghost. Who else is in there? Oh, you can take me out for that one. Is it not? Oh, sorry, folks. The lag is never disconnected. <laughs> what do you do when you finish? Oh. I do when I finish. Be quick. Oh. Edit words, is that good? No. Create machine, that's good. Oh, there we go. Have you? Brian's not here. Is there anybody? Is there anybody we're waiting for then? Is, is, oh, this is, am, am I not on the two minutes? Right. Sorry, folk. Okay. That's the seven minutes. That is the two minutes. Ha hands up if you're down for a two minutes. Hands up if you're down for two minutes. Thank no, you're fine, Nick. No, we can get, there's lots. And actually, looking at the time, if anybody's desperate to speak, I'm quite, it'd be fine to squeeze another one or two in. Yeah, just jump on. I always have my name down for the, the afternoon mark at the Learning Festival, and I thought, right, she had a couple of glasses of mint saying that. I thought, right, I'll go home. <laughs> I talked her into organising this one. I went home. I went home and uh, thought, right, and I just copied the wiki across and put Teach Me Falkirk on it, and I put my name down. And then once Neil Winton came to me, so I thought it might happen. So that's the only reason I'm doing two. But anyway, hopefully this will come on. This contraption here is all this is a, my PT gave me an old Angle Toys lamp, and I've just put a 15 quid webcam on it. A wee nephew in Primary 4 taught taught me this. It's not coming up, of course. Uh, so, 
basically it's a 15 minute, not 15 minute, a uh, 15 pound webcam that I'm using like a visualizer for cheap. And if I can work out how to convert this over. And I wonder how you can get a PC. Is that the right cable for the projector? That should be it now. Thanks. I think. <laughs> so basically, I mean, I'm, I'm not an English teacher, as I was saying earlier on, but I thought teachers uh, that have got only... That's joined up thinking, by the way. That's got conference and joining up. But basically, basically, I thought that... I've shown a couple of colleagues, and they've thought, right, I could use this in my classroom. Basically, when I'm sketching or designing, I fire up this webcam. Sorry. I fire up this webcam, and then I show the children on my projector screen what I'm doing, and I can record it and then quickly show it back. And I'm struggling here to, to show you it. So what I'll do is I'll just take a wee... <laughs> can't see my own screen. Basically, I'll show you a video instead of it working if I can't get this to work. But basically, that's a 15, 15 quid webcam there on the angle poise lamp. You can project right up the back of the room. If you hand write on the bit of paper, it'll project up the back of the room. Uh, how much time have we got? Sorry. So a wee video should should run just now. Can't see it yet. I think it's something to do with the resolution of the screen, maybe. Basically, this is me recording a pupil and I discussing their work. So an advanced hire. This is the webcam you should be able to see now, but that's the webcam like that above a magazine, and we're analyzing text or advanced hire graphics. The girl didn't want film, so we'll, we'll record this. So if a girl was, off, I think it was a girl off, and next week she might say, oh, wh what did we do in that lesson? I can just play this video back. So I've not edited the video, it just recorded straight in. And this is the girl and I discussing what she's gonna do with this work. Eh, no, it's okay, thanks, I'll just, so basically, you can see it's a little bit slow motion, but it's only £14, but it's, I don't know if you could do the same thing with these flip cameras, possibly. So basically, it's a very cheap £14 visualiser. You can't really read that writing there, but if I write my normal handwriting, it's about this big on the screen, so at the back of the room, children can read it. So what you could do is if someone at the back of the room has got a really good bit of work, quickly bring that bit of work down, fire it onto the camera, and the whole class can see it, take a, take a picture of it, and actually got a record of their work. You can't really do that on an interactive whiteboard. So any subject could use it. I was told today that maybe it's a bit illegal to take a photo of a magazine and show that around the room or on the network. But so that, that's the quality of the video. It's only 14 pounds, so 1.3 megapixel. 1.3 megapixel. Make sure you buy one at that, that size. So that was 15 pounds at a Comet or Curry's. I've actually got an HD one there for 43 pounds. So. But uh, you can see the quality I can't obviously actually demonstrate using it because I can't get the software to work, but so that, that's basically I always want to show you. So a really cheap visualizer for fourteen pounds. I can't see my own screen here. That that is correct conference. It's gonna join up departments, <laughs> not like faculties. <laughs> I've been using a, a document cam camera a wee, a wee bit. Is that what the flip thing is? No, no, no a document, you know, one of these, and it's, it's like 175 quid. And well, it we, basically does. We've got a 1,200 pound visualizer, yeah. but you can't fit A3 on it and you can't move it around the room and anything like that. Yeah. And I think I can photograph that or something. That's a, a, a quite a wonderful thing, I think. Um, there's a couple more folk, I think. Is, is this your camera? Yeah. Is there anybody else that's. Alan! Your name has been tweeted. Uh, Tess, do you want to come up? And uh, <coughs> I, have I missed anybody out that's put their name up on the wiki to speak? Yes. Have I missed anybody out that's on the wiki? Because I think my fruit machine is... How do you get rid of that? How do you get rid of that? I can't remember which fruit machine I'm using anymore. <laughs> so, is there any, anybody know of anybody? No. So, uh, Tess, you want a wee chop? And Alan, I believe you... You're, you're after a, a wee speech, maybe, so maybe we could squeeze Tess and Alan in, and then anybody else that wants to think up a quick speech um, could do that. Right, Tess. Yeah, that sounds, sounds good. A popular um, Hi, my name's Tess Watson, and I'm here. I formerly was with East Lothian, 
Um, I'm now working up at Murray House, which is, the, of course, Edinburgh University, um, on quite an exciting project with the Scottish Travellers Education Programme, which um, is shortened to STEP, is the acronym. Um, when we talk about travelling communities, before I started my job, I have to hold my hands up and say I was quite ignorant to who travelling communities are and their needs. Um, travelling communities, there are three main categories or groups, if you like. Um, firstly, you have Scottish Gypsy Travellers, um, and I'd like to say that they have to have a capital G and a capital T because they are um, an ethnic minority. There are show people who are show and fairground families. Um, they are classed as occupational travellers and they do not have ethnic minority status. And then there's also Roma gypsies um, who are largely based in governing Glasgow, but they're, they're increasingly, these populations are, are, are um, arriving in, in Scotland. I am seconded for two years with Edinburgh University on a programme that I have named ELATES. Um, and ELATES stands for e-learning and traveller education. Um, my role is funded by the Scottish Government's Equalities Unit and my aim by the end of my project is to have six local authorities um, all accessing a tailored curriculum for their travelling communities online so that the normal things that children would access within their own school and become familiar with, such as their classroom environment, um, will become a reality for the travelling communities in terms of accessing their classroom online. The needs for travellers are very different to your average school pupil. Travellers generally are looking for very basic numeracy and literacy, um, ICT skills, and also the driving license. So we're working with a number of different bodies to provide curriculum content via GLOW. So we're working with LTS as well. And really all I wanted to say is that Falkirk actually isn't part of my project yet, but you do have quite large travelling communities. So I'd be hoping to get Falkirk on board um, within the next year. If you've got any questions, see me at mealtime. Um, I have my business cards with me. I'm more than happy to put you in contact with uh, the relevant parties. And that's me, really. I hope I've not taken the two minutes. You can do whatever you <coughs> like. Thank you. Do you want to use that one? Or yeah, it's on a radio pack. Yes. I signed up to, to speak and then put the name on. And Conrad as well. Um, I was going to talk about my blog group, but Steve's already said that. So I thought I would talk for two minutes. Uh, Mark, if you'd join me here in the corner there. Is there a button for a projector for this one? Oh, you um, be put up I'm from Southern High School and last week four of us from the high school were invited to Brazil by Microsoft because Southern High was chosen as one of 30 odd international schools. Which one? And it was a phenomenal experience. I'm not going to talk about yeah. the beach, beaches and the rest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> six degrees, <laughs> any of that sort of thing. Is it a control? Is it a function? Is it a high? What I'm that trying to, to, to show you, and it's just a web address, when we were there, trying to see the staff to be left behind. Give him an extra minute here. <laughs> and to engage the, the pupils, um, we started a blog. Pat, I've read blogs for about a year, but I've never actually started one. Robert was there, um, just a glimpse of that kind of thing. Started the, the, the blog to record their thoughts. And I just thought we might I'd share the URL with you because it's a year-long program, and what I really got out of it, and what Mark and the other two got out of it, was speaking to teachers from other countries, like Finland, Can Canada, New Zealand, eh, America. They've all got the same concerns that we've got, and they've all got the same successes. Well, in some cases, I think in Scotland, we've got a hard enough job with their curriculum. But when you talk about these countries, it was bizarre. Like, I'm, I'm going to speak in Finland for a minute, excuse me, it was, it was, you're seeing stupid things like that. I'm going to have dinner with Australia and, and find out what they're, what they're doing with their curriculum. He talked in the background about our certain principles on curriculum for excellence, certain principles for curriculum design, that was our Scotland High thing. And they thought, wow, well, that's a really good kind of vision for a school. So we were saying, well, that's not our school vision, that's our country's vision. Not saying we've got it right, but I think just we off the back with we're on the right path, and that's part of the real, real positive message. And there's lots of information in the blog. Through Microsoft, there's lots of free products. Like I've just logged about Autoclaves, because they're throwing things. You can 
can sign up to the Department of Learning Microsoft website. In the future, maybe they even develop. I think I may as well uh, <laughs> turn off a little bit. But they've got free resources that you can use in your, your classroom. A good music resource, a good uh, worldwide telescope resource. They've, they've got things there about as well. But really, they're just trying to get these certain schools to talk and share and learn and then pass on to everybody else. So it's starting to come to a blog. I'm sure of that. <laughs> 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 Anyone else? Con? Don't mind. I'm, I'm you're, you not, you're not going to sing, Con. No, I just got a computer would be good because mine's just died. What do you want? That, eh, Mac, that's awesome. Mac would be fine. A PC, oh, that one's already posted. Oh. There you go. <laughs> just be finishing off. Yeah, no, this might be a kind of state in the obvious, and I do apologise. I work for the National CPD team and we do all sorts of wonderful things like learning rounds and flexible routes and we're involved in university and we do all sorts of great stuff. The best bit of CPD that I have done, and it's only very recently, is Twitter. And I don't know if I'm stating the obvious here um, with some people, but I'm just going to give you one minute on why Twitter is very important for me. For example, right now as we speak, this is how you do it. It's, has, has everybody seen Twitter or am I? You know, it's, you really should think carefully about it. See, I'm actually a lot older than I look, right? <laughs> See, when I first started teaching, we didn't have any inset at all. There was no such thing as CPD. We didn't have inset. We didn't have closure days. I think we had one day at the start of the year. The advisor in geography, as I was at the time, used to put courses on. But if you got the tap in the shooter for the course, it meant it was a badge of status. It was nothing to do with actually learning. It was, you're one of the chosen few. And I think, I think back to those times about wh where I actually learned how the craft of teaching. And it was in the staff room. And we sat in the staff room during the free periods. And we marked and we listened to each other. And they talked about number three knitting needles. And they talked about one man and his bloody dog endlessly. I think that was the first reality show. <laughs> I, I kid you not. But the only thing, we also talked about the Waynes in the classroom. How, how, you, how, you, how are you teaching me, John? I can't get through to him at all. And then we started to learn techniques, and that's how I learned my craft. And then we went through a whole cycle of, of official uh, inset stuff, and, we, and nobody dare sit in the staff room. We're all too busy away writing our CPD plans. So Twitter has brought that back for me. I don't know how, how I'm doing for time here, but let me just give you a wee, for instance, of, of, of Twitter. That's me, I'm CPD Scotsman. You log in, and you type in your username. Give me a second. I work for the government, I can't do two things at the same time. <laughs> Here's a little site I wrote. For busy teachers to help them cope, don't worry, be happy. It brings you lots of CPD, and much of that CPD is free, don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> One, that's what always happens, it's a different keyboard, I can't do it. So, I tweet on a regular basis to people all over the world. Uh, I've learned so much. I've collected a lot of the things you'll find in CPD Find. There's a provider called CPD Found, which is actually just wonderful CPD that we've found and we've we'll put on over the world. So you go searching for things like active learning and Twitter, you'll find out what people across the world are doing. And then I got into this problem with many people I want to follow, I can't actually speak their language. And then I discovered this site. I'm expecting the socket any minute, but sorry, the puppet. This is absolutely fabulous, right? <laughs> I'm just in the middle of you, just be quiet. That's uh, Katrina saying that. I think this is where I live, so this is my... <laughs> and then, so I follow people from Romania, and so you're just back from Brazil, let's find... 
I nearly said Brazilian there and made a right Egypt myself, didn't I? <laughs> and you can, you can actually take people's tweets and you can understand them, you can translate them and you can reply back. So that's the end. Thank you. Great, thanks very much, Con. I, I think we're kind of nearly about there. Um, a thing I meant to say in both of the things I was talking about tonight is Teach Me, I always think is, and, and this thing that David and I are trying to do, Edgy Talk, is guerrilla um, podcasting or guerrilla CPD in that it's, and Twitter's the same, it's light, it's mobile, it moves around, um, and it is effective. Um, I hope everybody's had a good time. I've had a great time tonight. Um, I think we need to thank very much. Um, I'm going to have to scroll way back up to the top again here. The guys up in the top here. Where is it? Yeah, there we are. Who are down and take the blame for this. That's <coughs> Margaret, Nick, Peter, Cassie, Rich, and Scott, Peter, and anybody else? He's here. I'll have to thank him anyway. Uh, and thank everybody else that turned up, um, everybody that spoke. Um, I just thanks very much. I just had a lovely time, Margaret. Um, and I think just thank you very much to Falkirk. Um, big round of applause for them, and then I'll talk about where dinner is. I think. I'm oh. I've been waiting.